So, sea level rise. And there's been a lot of predictions about sea level rise. Um, I've seen predictions that if the all the ice were to melt, then the sea level rise would be 70 millimetres. But then I did my own calculations and I just couldn't make that happen. Um, and that was a bit weird until I realised that scientists had made some naive assumptions I think and then I could get it to rise not quite 70 meters about 68 or so um, so yeah if all the ice melted we would certainly many of us be underwater but that's not going to happen is it because look at this and this video here is very important for a reason I'll come to in a moment So here's a, an article, a typical article, um, by Edmund Mathis, and uh, here he states that if all the ice covering Antarctica, Greenland and in mountain glaciers were to melt, sea level rise would be around about 70 metres. Now as I said, I couldn't get it to do that until I made some very naive assumptions. And um, the first naive assumption that the scientists make is that one cubic meter of glacier ice equals one cubic meter of water ice while well, it doesn't around about a tenth well just under a tenth of the material in glacial ice is not in fact ice it's trapped gases and little bits of pebble and stuff like that so you can take away around about a tenth of the volume of water that the uh, scientists were predicting. The next naive assumption they make, and cast your mind back to that video, what happens as the sea level goes up? And the answer is that the area of the water increases. That means that every time the water rises, it requires more water to give an additional rise. And um, when I did my initial calculations um, that were based on, on my logic, which is that basically the area of the sea increases as the sea rises, and um, I looked at some coastlines and I came to the conclusion that the best kind of average, um, because you've got some places where it's cliffs, so it's almost like there's a wall around the coastline, and you've got some places where it's beaches, at around about an angle of three or four degrees and I discovered that a good sort of uh, average was around 35 degrees so I assumed that the edge of the ocean sloped at 35 degrees and doing this and reducing the amount of water because um, the ice from the glaciers does not actually equal water ice um, I came to a rise of around about 18 meters not 70 or 68 as I later came to when I undid my logical assumptions about how this would work. But ice melting is not actually how the sea levels change very much. Um, now this may seem a bit illogical to start with but it's absolutely true and uh, he admits himself in this uh, article he says however all the ice isn't going to melt the Antarctic ice cap where most of the ice is has survived much warmer times um, now that is absolutely true and sea level has changed in the past and let's have a look at that because there's some bad news here Now here is a wonderful graph known as the Exxon sea level fluctuation graph and uh, we can see exactly what's going on. Now here we've got zero which is our current sea level approximately although it's going up at the moment by all of 2.4 millimeters a year they reckon um, and we can see that for much of the earth's history the sea level has been around about 100 feet uh, sorry 100 meters higher than it is at the moment that's the first bit of bad news 
that the natural sea level of the Earth is in fact 300 feet higher than where we are at the moment. And clearly this has got nothing whatsoever to do with polar ice cap melting. Now if you look at these fast fluctuations which is on the on the um, blue curve here which is the actual unadjusted data that's been taken of world sea levels all the way through to 542 million years ago then we can see that the Earth's sea level is always changing up and down over long periods of time. I mean each of these fluctuations is around 10 to 20 thousand years long. So it's a slow slow process and our current two and a half millimeters or so a year of sea change is well within the parameters of these big fluctuations. And that's something to think about because this is obviously a natural process to do with the earth. So what is it? And I'm going to show you exactly what it is. Now here's our first factor of three. Undersea volcanoes. Now undersea volcanoes, there are many of these around the world and what they do is they build up big cones of lava around them and this displaces millions of tons of water every year and in fact this is how new land is sometimes formed. There are five to ten new islands formed around the world each year, each one of these displacing millions and millions of tons of seawater. And this is quite a major contributor to sea level rise. And um, it's a natural process, it's ongoing, it happens all the time. And as long as the planet is volcanically active, this will keep occurring. And um, yeah, let's go and have a look at a new island being formed, shall we? So here we have a brand new island being formed off the coast of Japan. It started off as an undersea volcano and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And currently this island, which came up a few years ago, is quite large. And you can see next to it a previous new island, which was also created by a volcano. And you can just imagine the millions of tons of seawater that have been displaced, contributing to seawater rise. And this is exactly what happens. And this is one of our contributors to seawater rise. And here's our next factor, mid-oceanic ridges. Now all the red lines on here, the dots by the way are active, known active volcanoes. There are many unknown undersea volcanoes that we know about. Um, <laughs> we're just not sure about exactly where they are. Um, these are the known and plotted ones. Now. All of these red lines are what are called mid-oceanic ridges. So what's a mid-oceanic ridge? Well here we are. Basically what happens is when tectonic plates move apart, the join is almost always underwater. And because of the intense pressure there is within the center of the earth, as they move apart, the bed of the sea rises into a ridge and sometimes in the past this has produced new continents um, and these mid-oceanic ridges actually displace billions of tons of seawater and once again every year they are growing the sea level the seabed is rising and as it spreads out that rise continues. This has the effect of displacing billions of tons of seawater. 
So this, if you like, is the major cause of ocean rise. So for an example, here is the mid-Atlantic ocean ridge and you can see just how big it is. I mean, it's about a thousand miles wide at that point. Maybe a bit more actually, more like 1500 miles wide. And that has displaced over the thousands of years that has displaced billions of tons of seawater. So what happens when seawater level rises? We've talked about sea level fall uh, sorry, sea level falls. We've talked about sea level rising. How does it fall again? And this is quite interesting too. Now the reason that water sometimes falls is because of deep ocean trenches and here's a typical sort of 3D view of a deep ocean trench and they tend to occur immediately after a section of continent that's been created by a mid-oceanic ridge as Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, Cuba were created millions of years ago and what happens is that the whole picture changes because one plate starts to subduct instead of being pulled apart one plate is pushed underneath another and this causes the top plate to bend downwards and uh, there's suddenly a huge trench into which obviously water can flow and here's a diagram about that you can see here we've got a subduction zone where the Earth's crust is being forced downwards and it creates this enormous trench and it's usually not very far off a land surface that was previously formed by a mid-oceanic ridge and this is why the sea level then drops again because the Earth seems to go through this kind of breathing period where it breathes out and the water level drops and it breathes in and the water level rises and this seems to be a natural and fairly rhythmic process if you look back at our graph it's um, the peaks and troughs are quite regular on ocean rise and fall now all this is kind of the bad news and the bad news is this all around the world we find sunken cities and sunken ruins and this is not because the land has dropped in most cases it is because the sea level rose because the sea level as it is now um, is below average but it's not by any stretch of the imagination as low as it can get and these people just as we do built near the coast for the obvious reasons and they paid the price their cities sunk beneath the rising water over a period of thousands of years. And this is exactly what will happen to our cities. But the good news is that around 10,000 years we're going to have to do something about it. And the bad news is that there is nothing, nothing that we can do to stop it from happening. It doesn't matter what we do with our carbon dioxide emissions it doesn't matter what we do with our environmental movements and hydrological projects there is no conceivable hydrological project that you could build that would stop a 100 meter sea level rise which history would suggest this is what we are looking at 100 meters over 10,000 years. So that is the truth about sea level rise. It's got nothing much to do with global warming. It's been happening all the time. The seas rise and then retreat. And in fact, um, over the last 5 million years, the average sea level is around 70 to 80 meters deeper 
than it is at the moment. And if you look over the entire period of history that we can cover, which is about 540 million years, the average sea level is much deeper even than that. So I hope this has cleared things up for you. And if you uh, have found this interesting, please like, share, and of course subscribe. Subscription is free, and it means that you can see all the latest updates to my channel on your homepage. Thank you very much, and I'll see you all soon. Well, you could subscribe to Arduinotronic, or just go jump in a lake.